Hi there Nitika ma'am. Uh this Hi. is Nadia. This is Nadia from zenonco.io and Love Heals Cancer. We guide cancer patients on adopting an integrative oncological treatment approach. We help them find the balance between medical treatment and complementary treatment approaches. We help patients with our team of oncologists, lab experts, nutritionists and other healthcare professionals so that we can improve the treatment outcome for the patient as an overall basis, right? And as part of our forum here, we are connecting patients we are connecting caregivers we are connecting survivors and today we have nitika ma'am here with us to share her inspirational story we can't wait to hear her she's a cancer warrior and she's gone through a story that is so inspirational i myself can't wait to hear as being october being the part of breast cancer awareness we are really looking forward to this ma'am over to you Thanks Nadia that was i think uh, too much of praise for me and <laughs> sure everybody has their story to tell but uh, tell me where do i start ma'am we can start with where you started your diagnosis and uh, where do you think uh, this all changed your life from when you started seeing symptoms and yeah from See, there um frankly where it was just a friend of mine who had a double mastectomy and uh, since i had just turned 50 i had just celebrated a big 50th celebration of mine we decided that uh, my husband and i let's do some cancer marker tests literally it was like let's you know hand in hand let's go and get some tests done it was a there was no symptom there was no symptom there was nothing zero zilch and uh, both of us went we went but i did want to do cancer marker test because my dad has had cancer about 5 years back he's had uh, colorectal he's still there so they did a surgery but um, so i was clear i knew the cancer marker test so i we just went to a gynec and she said do these we went and did some sonograms and uh, in the when the sonograms were being done or uh, when he did the sonogram for the breast uh, now see i have menopause so when he did the sonogram for the breast he saw a fib uh, what is called a fibroadenoma uh, basically in layman language it's like a cyst he said it's only this small uh, literally like a centimeter uh, a centimeter is this small that's a centimeter so he said but it he doesn't he didn't know whether it was carcinogenic or not he said either we do a biopsy but my gynec said uh, it's so small and it's so deep that if a biopsy is done it may just shatter inside so she forwarded me to an oncologist uh, who's very famous in bombay and uh, he checked me out even he couldn't feel it so as what i'm trying to tell you that there were no symptoms absolutely no if i had waited for symptoms probably it would have reached stage i don't know what stage because it was so deep and it was so small and i would not have felt he could not feel it finally uh, he said that uh, you know i think you need a mammogram and an mri so one lesson that is to be learned is do not do a mammogram without a doctor's prescription we do in india tend to because we have the liberty of medical facilities and our freedom we walk into a lab and say mammogram chahiye because karna hai but we shouldn't do that until the doctor says so so he because you, in fact in tata hospital they will not they get angry if you do a mammogram more than once in 2 years unless there's a need so this doctor told me do a mammogram and mri and it, even there it kind of was on the fence and said that maybe a uh, carcinogenic may indicate may not but uh, uh, it will have to be removed so all this was done in 5 days the removal just a lump uh, i opted for a lumpectomy there is always a choice of a mastectomy a lumpectomy or uh, in some cases they directly go in for chemotherapy that is always dependent on the doctor but in my case even to diagnose it they needed to do something and they said that it since it was so small might as well take it out 
and do what is called a frozen biopsy, wherein they take it to the where when they're taking it out at the surgery, they just take it to a you know neighboring room where they put it on a little machine and tell you whether it is malignant or not. So you get your answer at the minute you open your eyes. The further detailed biopsies, of course, take their normal 10 days and whatever. So that is when I was told that, yes, it is carcinogenic. I was lucky to have the greater support system. I had great doctors, I had uh, great family, I had everything. Okay, surgery is done. And then again, I was sitting on the fence as to should we do chemo or not now? Because it was so small. Um, then again, the doctor said, um, you know, do further tests to see whether you need chemo. I said, but the further tests are also 99.8% correct. Suppose you tell me 99.8 and I happen to be in that point too, even if it goes to US and comes back. And uh, I did hear about that case, about that actor, Ayushman's wife, wherein she had, um, I may be a little mixed up in this, but I think she had opted for not, for just not doing chemo and then later it came back. So that kind of stuck in my brain because then she had she got it back within months and she had to do mastectomy. So I said that, so we, we decided to go to Tata after that. We decided not to go with a, a private hospital. One is I stay very close to Tata. And secondly, Tata is supposed to be the god of cancer. I mean, I was told that if you can uh, take it because uh, there is a lot of poverty there, there is a lot of sadness there, there is a lot of pathos. So it's really terrible. You are seeing small children. You're seeing poor people on the road. You're seeing people under the flyover. It's really sad. I mean, uh, I've been told by people that I couldn't do it. I mean, they couldn't do it. So I went with only one logic that um, they are dying. I'm dying. Net, net, sab eki jaga ja rahe hai. Okay, yes, they don't have the money and I do. But... Net, net, we all have the same uh, problem. You have cancer, I have cancer. So I just want the best doctor. I'm not going to look at a Ladida uh, hospital. If I can get the best doctors, the whole research, the whole team is sitting in Tata. So that's where we went. We met the dean and he suggested I do chemo. He said that your tumor is aggressive. A person has to understand that you can have a tiny tumor. Don't ignore it. So even though you may think, oh, it's, you know, even if you feel something and say, I, it's small and let me wait and see if it gets bigger. You know, people don't want to go to the doctor. If it gets bigger, I'll go. It could get bigger in a week and it could take six months to get bigger. It could take a year. So the rate of aggression differs with the size. One is a size differs and the other is a rate. So when they say stage, stage is a size. When they say grade, it is your aggression. I'm giving it to you in the most basic terms. So he said your grade is high and it's running. Even as small as it was with zero symptoms, it was charging. So he decided to do go in for chemo. I, my only I had to decide in three months, three minutes, whether I want to or I don't want to. So, because the choice is always yours, you can always say, no, I don't want to do chemo. It's my life. My ticket, I've removed the lump. I'm fine. It may or may not come back. Radiation was a definite yes. That is a given. So, chemo, what I, it has its disadvantages and we are still suffering for it. But uh, what I thought was that if it comes back 10 years later, you know, chemo will give me an edge of, let's say, I think uh, maybe 4%. The surgery is the biggest uh, removal. Then you have radiation, which is a huge percentage of your, you know, factor of not getting it back. And then you have chemo. But I said for this 4%, it should not be that 10 years later it comes back. And then I say, I wish I had done it. I have never, ever lived with regrets in my life. I think I have only two. That's it. And I don't, now I don't even remember those post-cancer. Who cares? I don't want to go back 10 years later and say that, I, shit, I should have done the chemo that time and it would have gone. It was just that 
in it it ruins you it ruins you in different ways then that's how we went for chemo and um i decided to do chemotherapy in tata i have been told the radiation techniques in tata are the best in the city in the country and um this is by my doctors and that's why i'd gone to tata to talk radiation and then they said that you need to do chemo so i started with chemo it was hell it was every bit of hell as they put it every bit of hell that they show the puking the vomiting the so you know when i first went the doctor i asked the doctor what will my hair fall when she looked at me tired jaded and says hair loss is the least of your worries the that time i didn't know what i had not started yet till i started then i realized that so i had pretty longish hair i mean up till here and uh, at that point i think it was a boon that my hair <laughs> fell off because when i would vomit nobody had to hold my hair back i had no hair to it was it was a little easier and i would be so tired that i was actually relieved that i don't have to wash my hair i mean look at the pros so all i had, and i got such a big kick because i got to use baby shampoo all over again so i was buying mom's company organic baby shampoo i'm not advertising but i'm just trying to tell you the thrill that i got so i would take this little bit and you know it gave me little little kicks in life so i kept myself going through is what i would tell someone find someone something to keep you going i'm sure everybody does it so what uh, used to make me now i look back and i look at my photos and i actually think like did i really do all this i mean was i what was i up to because i was stuck in a room because my immunity really had fallen my wbcs were low so i was nobody was allowed to meet me so i took out all my junk jewelry you know silver and costume not the gold ones and every day i would put on something new take selfies and send it to my friends to give my friends credit they all said you look beautiful i don't know what i looked but they all said you look beautiful oh wow oh wow. so i would put on a pendant and then i would say today's jewelry and i would take a selfie it did give now i, I mean i didn't do it after that so it just gave me something to do in the mornings you know okay what do you do i mean i'm sitting the whole day sitting alone and people even the family was you know would avoid my kids would avoid coming into the room because my immunity was so low it had hit me badly i used to watch a lot of television i think yes what they say is that it changes you yes it changed it changed me certainly because uh, as i say buddha found his all the buddhists who hear this will give me galis but uh, found his enlightenment under some tree i found it sitting in front of my tv watching you know all adventure series watching crime watching murder watching uh, all the bloodshed so there was even the series on medical series where the patient would um, was actually had cancer and she was going through chemo and she was vomiting all the time and she lost her hair that was the best series for me but total it was gruesome mar rahi hai to marne do it was like you know i am enjoying myself because i can't watch uh, just you know sad stuff or or you don't want to hear people telling you be positive no you want to be negative it's okay to be negative yeah i've got cancer yeah i mean it is a life it might have been small but it's a life threatening problem let's face it i mean let's not uh, sugar coat it and say this too shall pass if i actually you know uh, my son would say he's i've got an older son we we'll print out a notice what not to say to mama this too shall pass be positive i didn't want to be positive there were days i wanted to howl i want to cry let me cry i mean so people would say if you cry uh, your immunity will fall so so i wouldn't cry because i didn't want my immunity to fall then i would fall sick so i wouldn't get a headache but that was you need to be able to cry 
vent it out and then carry on. So chemo passed. Chemo was a chemo was hell. Just for chemo, I don't want any any of this again. I can handle the rest of it. But chemo was hell because it hit the the vomiting hit me very badly, very very badly. I mean, I had to be taken back every time. Very frankly, after I came home back, I used to go in the night because I would get the shivers and it was bad. So then there was a rate, but it would be bad for about three days. You got to live. So then there was a radiation, which was peaceful, mm. and uh, Tata um, allowed me to do. I'm thankful to them to do radiation there. So they sometimes I think they feel that if you can afford it, you should be able to go to a another hospital so that the uh, not so well off can go to Tata. I should not be stealing somebody's. But since I had a dip. You know, I feel people should at least get a second opinion from Tata. So my radiation, which happened there, I would not have got it anywhere else because it was a very weird radiation in that sense. It is not there in India. Only four hospitals offer that kind of accelerated radiation. Normally, it is done for breast. When they do it, it is five days a week, five weeks, five or six weeks. Well, that's what my doctor had told me, my surgeon. That you'll have to come every day and uh, do this. But um, when I finally went there, he said you've got a different kind of, uh, you know, different case. Which uh, so that we 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 can do, you follow you fall into a certain criteria and category, which we'll sort it out. And you have to come only once a week. So we give you the same thing. But that's because I was fifty. I, this is very rare. It's not. Uh, but the fact is. I could get it being a rare person. If I had gone to a private hospital, I would not have got this because they do not have the sources and the resources for research the way Tata has. So I had the head of radiation watching over my radiation and uh, so that it's less of a pain. I go only once a week that way. And that's how it was done. And I never wore a wig, if that is what worries people. That seems to be a big worry. So while I was finishing radiation, once I finished, I, in fact, used to started going to the Tata Hospital to help a bit in their counseling. We used to counsel the pre-operative uh, patients. That gave me also a lot of, um, you know, uh, confidence in uh, in handling myself. So when I would go there and I would see them and I would feel that I am I'm good, I've come out of it and I'm helping somebody, you know. So that, and I had to talk in Shud Hindi, because a lot of them came from Orissa, from Bengal and from Bihar and Maharashtra. So all my bachpan ki school Hindi came out. Like for, I could not remember in one class what do you say for signature in one session. So I'm, I had to think that suddenly it came, Hastakshar. Hastakshar mm -hmm. bolte. So, so but uh, we had to stop because of the COVID situation. But I've been going there. So for, and because I think that I was cured with uh, Tata, I I never mind going to Tata. I, I always find, I, I'm very happy when I go there. I hate saying it, it sounds so bad. I mean, people say, don't talk to me about cancer again. Don't talk Don't talk to me about the hospital. But uh, I've never, uh, even to, I had to recently go and pick up some medicines of mine. It was just like I'm home. It's like my home. Maybe because I got cured. If, I, if, it, if, it, if they had done something bad with me, then I may not have liked it, obviously. But net net, I like it because of that. Maybe. You've been there for that long as well. Keep going. You always kept going back. I go. I went back after that also. Yeah. Yes. So yes. I. Uh, I don't know. I. Uh, I think a lot of it has to do uh, because when I see the the poorer people or the little uneducated or the small town, they have a very bad time. Unka to matlab unke jo you know the stigmas attached. Ham kaise jayenge bina baal ke. हमने तो किसी को बोला ही नहीं है। I said आप हमको तो पल्लू लेना पड़ेगा। 
ہم نے تو اپنے بچوں کو نہیں بولا ہے اینڈ دے وڈ سب ہم کیا کریں گے ہم روٹی کیسے بنائیں گے ایسا میں نے دوسرے دن روٹی بنائی ہے یہ نہیں کہ آئی مین ٹاک ان انگلش بٹ میں دوسرے دن روٹیاں بنائی ہیں اپنی سبزیاں بنائی ہیں سو یو کین ڈو اٹ اٹس آل ہیئر ایف آئی ایون ود دا کیمو ود دا پیوکنگ آئی ہیڈ ہیوج سپورٹ بٹ آئی ہیو ہیوج ول پاور دیٹ آئی ول ڈو مائی ورک سو یس جس دن الٹی کی دو دن نہیں میں کچھ کرتی تھی اس کے بعد تیسرے دن آئی ول میک اپنا کھانا بناؤ اپنی سبزیاں بناؤ ٹھیک ہے باقی گھر کسی نے سنبھالا آئی ہیڈ ہیوج سپورٹ فرام فیملی اٹ از اے بگ تھنگ That was going to be my next question, ma'am, about your family and the care that you received from home, yes. I, have my, I live with my husband and my two uh, older children. They are adults now. But, uh, and my mother-in-law. To give them credit, each person, starting from my mother-in-law, to give her first credit, because people say, she doesn't do it, but she was, a, I would say, a god. And I'm not saying this for, uh, just for show. she she's old obviously if i'm 50 something she's old but she held the house and we could not suddenly get a cook in because uh, uh, i mean i no newcomers were allowed in the house right but uh, she held to you know she held sabke and my my kids were doing their internships at time so their food their khana and uh, she held and my husband He stood with me, he's wiped my vomit, he's cleaned up, my kids, my son's 25 now and my daughter's 21, so my son, he was here for an internship, luckily for me, and he, I mean, there was not a single point, Nadia, that I can't think of a minute, a minute where I felt ki, how will this happen? How will this happen? How will I go to Tata? How will I do it? You know, at any point yes i do have a driver all that thing but i had the kind of support and then i in fact started even a page on facebook and there also i wrote that um, people say ki uh, god has saved me bhagwan ne kiya bhagwan ne kiya i have nothing i mean god is great and god is there but i don't hear people saying even once which used to irritate me ڈاکٹرس نے کتنا کیا وائی آر ڈاکٹرس نیور جسٹ بیکاز وی آر پیئنگ دیم وی بیکاز وی پے سو دے ڈونٹ دے آر ڈونگ دے جابس گو ٹو ٹاٹا اینڈ سی دے سی ٹو ہنڈریڈ فیفٹی پیشنٹس اے ڈے دا ڈاکٹر ایچ ڈاکٹر آئی لرن دا آرٹ آف ویٹنگ ان ٹاٹا ان دیز ڈیز آئی آئی کوڈ نیور ویٹ فار سم بڈی فار ٹو منٹس ایون ناؤ آئی ایم سو پنکچول بٹ دیر آئی لرن چار گھنٹے بیٹھے ہیں چار گھنٹے بیٹھے ہیں بیٹھنے کی جگہ نہیں ہے ایک ٹانگ پہ کھڑے ہو جا کوئی بات نہیں سب زمین پہ آتا ہے I mean, like I've heard, I've seen in movies, the person is vomiting, then somebody just does this and everybody is fine. But here I couldn't stop. Like, it was bad. So I lost it. In the beginning, it was bad. The first two weeks were horrible. I mean, I was angry. I was irritable. I was shouting. I was screaming. I was, I didn't know what had hit me. Then I, then my daughter tells me, it's happened to you. You need to calm down. People are doing things for you. What more can somebody do? And that's when I realized people are doing things for me. I mean, everybody's doing everything for me. All I'm doing is sitting on my bed and throwing tantrums. So I need to shut up. And mm. that's, and someone said, do meditation. I said, oh yeah, it's done. <laughs> so you know what? Uh, the one word, Nadia, which took me through, uh, no, no mantar, no job, no puja, no part. Whatever gives you peace. I, I would say to anybody, if you want to do puja part, please do. If someone has said that you don't have to eat, you don't have to eat, please do. Do whatever. One thing during 
this whole treatment, whether you do only chemo, you do only whatever you do. Jo man ko achha lagta hai, karo. Whatever it makes you happy, do. Just don't stress. Because that you don't need with this. Uh, with this illness, you don't need that. So my father told me this. Because I whined a bit to him. I said, um, I must have done something in my past lives that I have to get this. You know, I, I'm a do-gooder. I'm a giver. I look after everybody. He's been in the army. He's a doctor. Had, had many surgeries in his life also. Yes. Also cancer. Bad. It was a bad cancer surgery for him. Listen to me for 10 minutes. Going my whining and then teen cheese boli inone. Cancer ek bimari hai. Kimu ek ilaj hai. Baki sab kuch niyamat hai. Niyamat means blessing. Yes. It's an English word that I can think of, the nearest. I said, kya blessing, kya niyamat hai. Meko to bimari ho gayi na mujhe. He says, tumko doctors, imi, tumko panch din me pata chal gaya tumhe bimari hai. लोगों को छह छह महीने नहीं पता चलता तुमको डॉक्टर नजदीक मिला तुमको उसी हफ्ते मंडे को गए हो उसने सैटरडे को बेड दे दिया द नर्सेस वर सो केयरिंग तुमको प्रॉब्लम हुई रात को तुम्हें देख लिया दे सॉ यू इमीडिएटली इन द कैजुअलिटी इट टू बी 4 मिनट्स टू रीच द हॉस्पिटल 4 मिनट्स एंड आई वाज विद इन 5 6 मिनट्स आई वाज ऑन माय ऑन द बेड हाउ व्हाट मोर डू आई आस्क he said, और क्या नियामत चाहिए इसे तुम्हारे दोनों बड़े-बड़े बच्चे खड़े हैं टू हेल्प यू जिसके छोटे बच्चे हैं उनको वो भी सोचना पड़ता है he says that's when i started thinking and i even joined some gratitude group where i would write three things i am grateful for every day it took me through it's that uh, i think luke catinos he has one gratitude sangha so i just mm-hmm. joined it i didn't believe in it but i think it helped immensely I would just say I'm thank, grateful that there is a sun outside. I'm grateful for this cup of tea. I'm grateful that I may, that I have this mug. I'm grateful that I have this laptop. Mm. I mean, how much can I keep writing? I'm grateful for my mother I'm grateful for my husband. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Ma'am, tell us about your lifestyle. How it used to be before cancer, how it went through the treatment and how it is right now. What do you mean lifestyle? I, I your don't... diet, your your eating habits, your exercise. See, uh, your diet, what you're saying is that uh, even prior to the chemo, uh, the treatment, even prior to the treatment, I've been very particular, which is why I couldn't figure out why this happened to me. It's not that I smoke. I don't smoke. I don't drink is maybe once in two weeks. I will have one 15 ml drink. That's it. Or may sometimes even a month. So I don't really know why this happened. I mean, if you want to, I, I've stopped blaming anything. But I've been very particular about my diet before. Uh, for nearly two years before that, I had started using a lot more of your cold-pressed oils, a lot more of organic food, what they so-called say. Hopefully it is organic food. And... Um, so for nearly two years before that, I had been used, been particular. Till then, I think my our awareness was not there so much. So we didn't. So simply, yes, I used to eat a lot of your samosas and fries and namkeens as much as anybody would. But uh, two years, because I used to suffer from migraines. So I'd start, then I cut down all these things, your maidas. So two years prior to this, I've had a very good diet. And uh, during chemo, I would not like to comment on the diet because I found find that uh, if I say something, each person, each patient, each uh, treatment and protocol is different. So I could be given a certain diet and the next person would not be given that diet. And I used to get very annoyed with people telling me, tumko ye khana chahiye. Finally, I figured that what the hospital is telling me is what works. Because it depends on which, uh, which medicine they are pumping into you. So if they're giving you a particular kind of protocol, that way, if it damages your stomach lining, 
then you have to be very careful about what you eat. So you do not eat from, but one thing is for sure in most chemos, whether it is breast, thyroid, brain, most, is um, avoid outside food during chemo because you don't want to fall sick. Avoid fruits with thin skin, patla chilka, like a plum, amrood. So I could not eat that. You only eat stuff which you can peel off. Right. Don't eat. In India, they say don't eat uh, salads raw. Abroad you can because definitely it is cleaner. Here it is not. So you don't know how well it's been washed. So even if you're peeling the cucumber, you don't know. So for, for me, for I stopped eating salads completely. I said, why take a chance? But fruit, I did not want to give up. It was mango season when I got it. Mangoes, I don't. So, so my mom-in-law would take warm water and wash the mango with it, wash the knife, wash my... So all my bartan were kept separately. This is a lot of chemo people do this. Their vessels, their cutlery, the plates are kept separately. And uh, it is... Uh, since I have a dishwasher, I don't wash it separately. So in the dishwasher, the temperatures are very high and they get... They come out and they... Um, they're kept separately for me. So it's right. already washed with hot water, so it doesn't matter. So, uh, and I've continued the same diet. Prior. After the chemo radiation, I got back to the same diet. For a few months, for three months after that, I had to be careful about outside food. And then, mm -hmm. so for a year, they say that you should be careful about not falling sick. So right, if, I, if I felt sick for a year, I had to go back to... For three months, I had to go back to Tata. And after that, I go to a GP, but I have to tell him. Right. Man. COVID was difficult for me because I can't meet people at all since I become immunosuppressed. But take it, it's okay. Right, ma'am. Also, some one more thing that baffles me is this just happened by chance. It was not even a symptom that showed you on your body. It was just something no. you thought you should go and do. And... Um, I don't know, it just, you just found out something so valid for your life, you yeah. know? Yeah. I still can't get my head around the fact <laughs> that, you know, I don't know. Could have gone anyway. Like, I've gone anywhere. I mean, if I had not gone, it would have, and I'd gone, if I waited by chance, if a symptom had come, I would have been on stage three. This was stage one. It was right. only one centimeter. It was so deep. In, it was one, it was not on the surface. Like some right. people say we felt the, uh, you know, the, whatever, the lump at the surface. So mine wasn't on the surface. It was very deep inside. And they also took out some nodes. So it is a pain. I mean, when they, they check your auxiliary nodes, which are in the armpit. Yeah. See if it's spread to the armpit, to the nodes. That is a pain which you have to live with all your life. You need to be careful. You don't lift more than five kilos. Uh, for for one year, you don't lift more than five kilos. We can't wax our arms. We cannot shave our arms. We are not allowed to um, take BP on that arm. Mm. Right, right. So, uh, what I found is most of the private hospitals do not even tell you a lot of this, which is very sad. They don't even tell you the exercises which are needed. I was not told. I'm not naming any hospitals, but I'm not. I was not told that you can't do that. You need to do these exercises. So I used to be in pain till I went to the Tata and they said, you don't know the exercises. I said, no. They said, please go. There's a physio room, go and learn. Until date, I have the pamphlet and the exercises which I'm supposed to do all my life. Wow. There is a, there is a regime for uh, to stop lymphedema. But I've right, just, private hospitals, if you're doing a surgery, do it. No, Do that also. Why are those exercises not taught you know, just do one session. It take, it's it's a ten minute. It's a ten minute. That's all. And yes, when you get lymphedema, it is the most pain. Pain. I've heard of people getting it nineteen years after they've had a surgery. Okay. And I'm not saying mastectomy. It's horrible. Mm. That's right. Horrible. Yes. I mean, there's always an if that if I had not done this or no. Yeah. Yeah. That that also. That also. Ma'am, uh, what was your reaction when you first saw those reports that said, okay, now I'm cancer-free? 
but i'm cancer free cancer free is for the right now maybe uh, it was just this year which i did uh, yes the august yes it was relief of course i mean i didn't think because i've been putting on weight so there's no uh, thanks to the medicines i'm taking i am putting on a little weight which i'm trying to lose but uh, the chemo had some and the medicines i take they do have a little bit of uh, side effect of uh, osteoporosis you need to be very careful and the tiredness does not go for very long one thing i would tell to people who gone through chemo is that you feel the treatment is over the medicines are over the radiation is over your hair is come back you're fine and people say ab sab kuch theek hai it's not it's not you deep inside you're still wondering what happened come to terms with it and secondly your body is tired they pumped in poison inside you it's gone all the way into your bone marrow and stopped everything so it's okay to sympathize with go into a little bit of self pity but give yourself a break you know after chemo you're going to be suddenly tired even for a year it could take a year it could take two years so for me so at that time you need to just rest rest your body it's presumed that you're fine it you don't realize what's happening so you're just suddenly tired but you need to rest it out there's no other there is nothing else that you can do except just fall flat and rest so that's one suggestion which i wish people had told me because i couldn't understand it instead yes, of giving me gyan on food <laughs> <laughs> so i stopped listening to people because everybody would give me their version but that didn't work with me yes i mean uh, sources need to be authentic and get the information mm-hmm. the right information needs Each to reach you and also i have done a treatment last year if somebody does a treatment two years later technology has advanced the medicines have advanced what happened 5 years back is not happening now like right. the radiation i got it's only been 15 years old and 15 years is nothing yeah ma'am yeah and i uh, it takes 10 years for them to have uh, guinea pigs and then for the sample studies in uk and then they've only been done you don't get for 5 years so i'm pretty new in the story so, yes yes ma'am uh, coming to um the lessons learned you wake up with so much gratitude like the way you're talking to me you you there is so much zest in you and vibrance you talking about a story maybe that would have had so many ups and downs while you were going through it but today we are having this conversation about it and i feel your entire perspective has changed could you talk to us more about that ah uh, see you know they say that uh, with chemo you get a slight memory loss which is called chemo fog mm-hmm. when i was told i obviously i mean i had only four cycles i mean the other female had uh, 16 cycles so theek hai i had four cycles kahan ke but i slowly found that i was getting a slight i couldn't remember things so for me everything is a challenge everything is a challenge so i started thinking what can i do to exercise the muscles of my brain so i by nature i do uh, indulge in uh, you know the occult in the sense palmistry and stuff so i started learning numerology because i needed to learn math and then uh, in that though i used to be tired a lot of the times and then i started learning astrology so i'm 51 now i'm learning astrology which is a very deep subject and i'm learning tarot i'm learning a lot of tarot is still easy but astrology is a lot of study lot of charts lot of studies so and i slog at it I, my kids laugh at me so through the lockdown that kept me going so i had no issues uh, about uh, i'm cooped up at home the minute the lockdown started we stopped the physical classes and went for this because what i i think i moved into a phase you move into a phase where see we all know we are going to die nadia it's not somebody's going to die at one point and somebody's going to die you know at another day i'm not going to die in a hurry i'm not saying i will but suddenly when you have a terminal illness and especially one like cancer i'm not saying that the heart attack people are going to die later it's just that cancer is a is a like a heart attack person i not that i'm 
putting that, undermining that. But he knows it's his heart. So his heart is what he needs to be careful with. But now I know I'm taking a medicine which I also need to worry about my uh, uterus now. Will it affect my the walls of my uterus? I'm now on a hormone drug which could give me a uterine cancer. And will I, you know, so that fear of, even if I have a, uh, even if my blood is tired, even if I'm tired, I'll be thinking, is it a kind of blood cancer? So the, the sword is always on our head. And of course, I knew I was going to die, but the door was very far off. I call it my red door. I don't know why I like red, I think. Even the death door is red door. So the door, which I could not see till now, I, can, I could see it now, certainly. So it's still far away. It's still not there, but it's there. So my attitude changed that I am going to live my life the way I want to. I, um, I was the kind of person who worried about everybody. I mean, I'm not going to say holistic reasons. And I mean, we all know that. So let's leave that. So, uh, but I was a kind who would worry. I mean, you have a problem. I still do it. But now I have my boundaries. I still worry about it, but I'm able to detach. Earlier, I would not detach. Earlier, I would, you know, overflowing with nurturing and mothering care. And I would have sleepless nights. It would affect I, you. It would affect me badly, badly. And, but with this, slowly, slowly, I, you know, in Tata, in the, I don't know about the other hospitals, they don't let you take photos in the ward. But I used to tell my daughter, and I hope they're not watching this, but they would tell my daughter, take photos. So each chemo, I took photographs. So someone said, how can you be so morbid? I mean, you're getting... So I said, the, you know, the medicine that they give you, you give me at least, was a red color liquid. The, the, the chemo drug, it was a red IV fluid. And I was not allowed to move a millimeter. That red fluid is what keeps me going. So every time I go back into my uh, original mode of either being a sucker or being a, you know, self-pity or uh, whining a bit or going, nay, I wish I could do this, anything like that, anything negative, mm -hmm. suddenly I'll do it for some days because... I've now moved away from the chemo zone. It's been a year. So the bottle is far away now. It's, it's there now. It's there. But suddenly I remember the bottle. And uh, then I ask myself, do you want that again? And then, no. The red bottle. I still remember the red, clear. It was clear liquid. Clear. It's, and like I burnt my arm. So the liquid, one day it leaked. So if you see it here, I don't know. Yeah. Can you see it? I can see it. I this can burn. See it. It's a, it's a, the vein got burnt. It's gone. Okay. So, uh, so people say, oh, like, you know, my mother started crying when she saw it on, uh, when she, she doesn't stay here. She said, I mean, it was a horrible. Sometimes I think this was worse than the keyboard, these small, small things. Because it burnt, it got infected, and a whole lot of thing happened. Because uh -huh. see, it's poison. The medicine is poison. <laughs> It goes through your veins and if the needle touches the wall of the veins, you're gone. It's spread. And then it then it burns away. Mm -hmm. So so then I look at this mark and I tell myself, so get a hook. So my hook is this scar. That mm -hmm. uh, do do I want this uh, any more of this? So I say no. And then I just do what I want and I live my life the way I want to. Because uh, I don't want to go back to being a person who can, you know, just take. Uh, so uh, the perspective changes. And I think it happens for a lot of people that they realize that uh, um, if earlier they had, let's say, uh, uh, 30 years to live more, maybe it's only reduced by, let's say, five years. Let's take it. Chalo. I mean, I'm going to live. I'm, it's not going to come back. I, I'm positive about that. It's not going to come back. I've got a genetic uh, testing done. Mm -hmm. But that's five years less. no? And why am I losing out on that? I mean, I may not live till 90. I may live till 85. But I don't want to live. I would have liked to live till 90. Maybe. So every day, even if I, I will try not to hold, I do not hold a grudge anymore. Earlier, I would hold a grudge and not let go. 
maybe maybe i couldn't earlier let go and now i can it's as simple as that it's not that now i i think now i don't have i didn't have a choice then and i don't have a choice now your perspective automatically changes it's like earlier if somebody said something to me it would fester 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 in my brain for fester for years mm -hmm. now it's if i object so much to it then i'll tell you on your face and then i walk mm -hmm. away and but now i've also realized that maybe he's going through his own hell i mean who cares or, or it is who cares who cares frankly yeah. who cares it's uh, i it sounds a little bald and it sounds a little rude sometimes i think i come across sometimes my family sometimes thinks that i may be a little rude on this <laughs> but i think they've understood earlier i would fret you know i would tell my daughter you did not take this medicine you did not take this she's old enough and she she didn't like it for example and now i just tell her you need to take this medicine and i walk away it's not that i don't love her but i've understood that i don't need to break my brains about it she will take it if she doesn't she knows what's going to we all know what's good for us and yeah the family that... changed. my family changed too they also grew up in many ways they also understood many things my children changed radically my daughter really changed mm. so, i'm coming to my final question ma'am yeah. what is your take away message to everybody out there words of wisdom for someone who has had this encounter with a disease like cancer for somebody who's not had it check up check up check up check up is what i'd constantly say which i've said even on another site if you've not had a cancer today earlier it was 40 today after 35 go to a if you have it in your family go earlier to a doctor so what i'd constantly say if you've not had it till now please go for a check up please do self checks those self checks don't necessarily help you they didn't help me but or go to a spend money on a gynec and ask them to do a sonogram a sonogram is safe and somebody who's had it i would say even if you've got two years to live live them to your fullest i mean there's even if you've reached a stage where there's nothing left now i know people who have seen people who knew they were going in six months and the lady went all the way abroad and she came back so if you whatever you can afford i know i met a patient in tata who said after she got her treatment she says uh, very uh, very average lady and she said i got a tattoo da mm -hmm. and i don't want any more needles in me i mean i've got my needle marks i don't want but she wanted a tattoo she got a tattoo done so i am intending that when this covid stops and when i can travel again i love love traveling all my tickets have been cancelled because they said for a year after chemo you don't travel abroad i want to pierce my ears here hmm. the upper one but this one you have i want to go to jammu and do it because i'm part kashmiri but uh, uh no not this one this is this i'll be touching the cartilage Thank it's you. a bad one so so but that's also scary okay and i don't have piercings but uh, do you know uh, i just wish that we could do this before why do we have to why do we have to take the lesson from cancer do it without it if you can but i think sometimes we all need a little maybe we just need a lesson lesson to step back smell the roses and then move on maybe i needed that lesson because i was always moving 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 yes ma'am yeah. definitely we all do everybody who's been through it please enjoy your life with whatever you can enjoy it in less you can enjoy it in more and remember that when you're gone your cupboard is only cluttery that's all so empty your cupboard also empty your cupboard empty your brain and chill i realize that this i think covid has also made people realize that that both the things that collecting anything is not and the same thing i realized in chemo is there's no use collect, collecting anything just I pulled out all my expensive pens and I would write. I said, I don't know if I'll die. I'll pull out. What am I saving them for? Right, ma'am. So, right. So live, live. This really, really changed your perspective on material things that we have, and people give more importance, I think, to 
I like things my that money. Really I like the material things. I can't deny that. Yes. Uh, but I now uh, enjoy them. Yes. Right. So right. I'm not saying I want the branded things. I'm not saying material as in branded, but like uh, I actually relish. So the first time when I went after radiation, I took a flight and went to meet my parents. I can't begin to tell you how I enjoyed that flight. You know, that the joy of the airport and the joy of going and buying something, a little muffin and the joy, the joy of that. I will never be able to get that again. That, uh, that yes, I'm alive and I can do this. I'm, wow. there, is the, there is a different uh, feeling which comes into it. I know all terminal illnesses have probably, you feel that way. But for me, it was a, definitely a first of the joy of that. You know, even going for a movie after that. Yes, even a movie in a movie cinema. Yes. It was a. So <laughs> keep getting yourself checked up is what uh, I'd say. The main takeaway. What main takeaway to anybody is check up, check up, check up. Do not be scared. Right, ma'am. Or chale gaye. Chale gaye. How much we lived? We lived. We lived happily. Yes. That's that happiness. And that is hair, hair is not. If you're going through it, hair comes back better. Remember that. My hair is better now than it was before. I had thick hair before, but this is like now it's... And I never had curly hair. So it's come out very nicely. And all little curls have come. So these are all little ringlets I have. So I'm happy. I mean, that way. Wow. I'm really happy on that. Yeah. Love your attitude. Love your radiance. That that's glowing right across. Like seriously. <laughs> anyway, it is beautiful to see how your attitude and the whole take on life has changed. And I really like the traveling thing that you intend to do. I can't wait for you to do that. Do let I me know. I had my tickets booked. Yeah. The rest, of course, is history. I had <laughs> a year from my uh, radiation date. I was waiting because I love traveling. And well, COVID is not allowing anybody. Allowing, not allowing <laughs> anybody. I had to cancel my tickets. Yes. Yes. Thank you so much, Nit Nitika, ma'am. It has been such a pleasure talking to you. So many things, yes. so many questions answered there. Yes. I'm pretty sure this video is going to benefit so many people watching it as well. And more than anything, keep on inspiring all of us. Keep on inspiring us, being yourself, being the fighter that you have become. And kudos to you. It has been such a pleasure talking to you on behalf you, on co.io and Love Heals Cancer. I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart for taking the time out for this. Oh, thank no, you. No, absolutely. Anything I can do, let me know. Definitely, ma'am. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Have bye a nice day ahead. Bye, ma'am. Bye. Bye, Nadia.